Hi and welcome back. This week we are going back to Les Vosges because there is a lot of crazy sh** that keeps happening there. We are going to delve into the case of Laetitia de la Cruz where the truth is hard to find. This story is a bumpy ride so fasten your seatbelt folks because it is about to get messy. disappearance. Laetitia de la Cluse is a 38 year old mother who is living in Les Vosges in a small town called Ramonchamp. She works in an old people's home or a retirement home for you people from the USA. She has two young girls, seven and nine, and she is married to Danielle Rudenko. Ruden, Rudenko. Rudenko. On September the 4th, 2014, Daniel Rodenko, the husband of Letitia, makes a phone call at 8 a.m. in the morning to Karine, Letitia's best friend. He asks her, hey, have you seen Letitia? She didn't come home last night. I'm wondering if she's with you. Karine says, no, she's not with me, but it's 8 a.m. Maybe you should try calling her work. That's normally where she'd be. So Danielle picks up the phone and calls her work. Her work says she has not arrived yet, which is not like her. She's normally on time. He then goes on to call sa mère, sa sœur, son frère, tous ses amis. He tells them she did not come home last night and she has not turned up at work. His exact story to the family is that he wakes up at 3 a.m. in the morning after having gone to bed early that evening and he looks out his window having heard some noises. He sees Laetitia going into a car with some of her belongings with some unknown guy and she drives off and then he does not see her again. But to him it seemed like the belongings she had taken with her meant that she wasn't coming back. The very same day as Danielle calls around, signaling that Letitia has disappeared, Karine, Letitia's best friend, goes directly to the police station. Karine has a funny feeling and she really wants to talk to the police. She wants to give them some background information about what Letitia has been recently living through. She states Letitia wanted to leave Danielle recently and her life had become quite difficult. Their relationship was difficult. Il était violent. He was violent. He was also very controlling. He would go through her phone. He would go through her papers. He would have complete control of the bank accounts. And she wasn't allowed to do anything. She couldn't go on the computer. She didn't even have the password. She wasn't even allowed to open the mailbox. She did not have the key. Now, Karine tells the police that Letitia was scared of her husband. Things had recently got a lot worse. Letitia had lost a lot of weight and she was very on edge. They had been arguing a lot and now she's missing. Karine is concerned because she knew Letitia. She was her best friend and she believes Letitia wouldn't leave without her two girls. The very same day, the police decide after the statement from Karine to open an investigation into the disappearance. And so again, the very same day, they're pretty efficient in this case. They go to the house of Danielle. The investigation. So the police arrive at Danielle's house and for the moment he is their one and only suspect. It is a nice house, une jolie maison, with a nice garden, un beau jardin. Danielle welcomes the police officers in and shows them around the house, giving them a tour and even explicitly showing them what she has taken with her when she went off in the car. The police ask him if they can question him in a more formal environment and he politely agrees and so they go to the police station. They begin by asking Danielle about his marriage. He states he is surprised that she left even though it was not a good marriage. He did not expect her to leave suddenly with another man. 
The police want to get to the more juicy questions and so they ask him why he thinks that she left the kids. Now this is where our story gets quite interesting because Danielle's version of events are very different from what we have heard from Karine, the best friend of Letitia. Danielle states that Letitia was abusive to her two girls. She was not a natural mother and she didn't really like the two girls. In fact, she made their lives, all three of them, a living hell. She used to beat the children, they often had bruises, and he once caught her dragging one of the girls across the room by her hair. But the lowest moment was when he caught her in front of the two girls. This is a moment where he decided that he could no longer work. His work would take him away from the girls and he felt he could not protect them if he was not with them. So he decided to quit his work to protect his girls. He continued to tell the police to which extent Letitia was crazy. However, the most recent thing she did shocked even him to the core. It happened just one month ago. Letitia gave her kids a snack as usual, but afterwards, the kids didn't seem right, as if they were drunk. When he asked the girls what's wrong, they said that mum had given them some fizzy water and it tasted funny. Daniel, concerned about his two girls, rushes them to the hospital and brings the bottle of water in question with them to be analysed. In the urine, they find benzodiazepine, a sedative used for adults normally. Now, Danielle has the paperwork proving the traces of this product in the urine of the girls. He was convinced she was attempting to kill them. This is damning evidence against Letitia. Then he decides to show the police a text message he had received from Letitia just after she'd gone missing. It says, Je dois partir, débrouille trois avec tes gamins. Je n'ai pas envie d'aller en prison. Dis-leur que je les aime. Très fort, malgré tout ce que je leur ai fait. I have to leave. You figure things out with the kids. I don't want to have to go to prison. Tell them that I love them very much, even though I have done horrible things to them. This, for the police, is more evidence against Letitia. This explains clearly why she left without her kids. And Karine's statement begins to look very weak. That very same evening, Danielle hands over the paperwork to the police of the intoxication anal analysis. On the paperwork, it even states that the doctor had found this so suspicious, he flagged potential child abuse to the authorities. The police begin to realise that their number one suspect may indeed be the victim. As time goes by, multiple sources come forward to the police and explain their version of events. All of these sources seem to have one common theme, that Letitia's character is gentle and loving, but Daniel's character is aggressive and perverted. One week goes by and Letitia's family begin to put missing posters around their area. They also gather a group of people for a search party. The search party sweeps the streets, the forests and the roadsides. Daniel obviously doesn't come to help. The day of the search, he brings his two children out to a restaurant. He obviously believes that she has run off with another man, so of course he's not going to look for her as a missing person. With mounting statements against the character of Daniel, the police are, however, becoming quite suspicious of him, and so do keep a close eye on his behaviour. Within the statements that the inner circle of Letitia and Daniel gave to the police, they also did mention what Daniel had told them was his version of events, and the police discover that Daniel has multiple versions. He has told five different versions of that evening's events. At this point, with the search party, the press do become interested in the story and one station invites Letitia's brother, Tony, to come on and speak about what he feels has happened to his sister. Tony, when he is on air, directly accuses Danielle and he says, when we find her, we are coming for you, Danielle, and we will press charges. The first thing the press do after this statement is they call Danielle to hear his side of the event. Danielle states clearly to the media that the police have searched his house and there is nothing suspicious. He has absolutely zero to do with her disappearance. 
The brother Tony, feeling like the investigators are lacking some drive, decides to do some investigating of his own. He plants himself in front of Daniel's house and begins to surveil him 24 hours a day. He watches his every move, but he doesn't find anything. However, a homicide investigation is opened. The homicide investigation. Since Letitia's disappearance, her credit card has also gone missing. And so the first thing the investigators do are check her credit card transactions to see if she's used it since her disappearance. It had been used on the 4th of September in the morning, just hours after she was first reported missing. It had been used at a service station. So the police go directly to the service station and ask for the camera footage. They find the footage of the exact time that Letitia's card had been used and they zoom in to see none other than Daniel Rudenko using Letitia's card. This is quite strong evidence against Daniel, but the police need much more to be sure. So they start looking further for other pieces of evidence. They look into the famous text message that she had sent to Daniel just after she left. They find that Letitia's cell phone has pinged the cell phone tower closest to their marital home. And also Daniel's telephone has pinged the same cell phone tower. This evidence kind of suggests that maybe Daniel sent that message from Letitia's phone, pretending to be Letitia. This is still not enough evidence, they need more. So the next lead they decide to follow is from the intoxication of the young girls. Daniel had given a scathing report of Letitia in his interrogation, claiming that she had committed multiple types of child abuse and the drugging scandal solidified this information. But the investigators decide to ask the young girls themselves. They ask the young girls what exactly happened on the day in which they had gone to the hospital with the drug intoxication. The young girls state that their father had given them the fizzy water and they state that they felt absolutely fine, but their father had told them they had to go to the hospital. Letitia was not even at the scene. The investigators also asked the girls what their mother was like, and they loved their mother. She would protect them when they were feeling scared of the dark. She would bring them to all their favorite hobbies, and she loved them. Letitia was a brilliant mother. When the investigators look further at the intoxication analysis, as it would turn out, the doctor had made a mistake. There was an error on the results. And as it would turn out, the girls had not been poisoned at all. But why make up this lie? Now bear in mind this whole intoxication scenario had happened one month before the disappearance of Letitia. Now the fact that he had fabricated a lie about the child abuse and the intoxication one month prior to Letitia disappearing means that if there is a body found, this could be a strong case for premeditated murder. On the 30th of September 2014, Daniel is arrested in his marital home in Raymond Champ and he is told he will be taken into police custody for the remainder of the investigation. Meanwhile, investigators come into the house whilst Daniel is still there with cadaver dogs. Now this is the first time within this investigation that cadaver dogs have been used and they are taken into the house to see if there are any signs of cadavers or have been any cadavers in the house in the recent past. These dogs are highly sensitive to smells and would be able to pick up a scent even if a couple of weeks had passed. One hound signals that he wants to go down to the basement and Danielle who is watching this unfold for the first time begins to look very stressed. As the investigator slowly makes his way down to the basement or le cave en français, he is hit with a familiar smell. It is indeed the smell of a decomposing corpse. The dog leads the police over to a small piece of furniture and when the police move the furniture, they see that the ground underneath looks like it has been recently disturbed. They begin to dig and very quickly, just centimeters under the surface, they see a black bin bag. When they open the black bin bag, they discover the body of Letitia de la Cruz, cut into small pieces. Daniel's final version of events. 
When Daniel is questioned about the murder of Letitia de la Cluz, at first he remains silent, but after a couple of weeks he decides to tell people what really happened. Now this, remember, will be the sixth version of events from Daniel. The evening of her disappearance, the 3rd of September 2014, Letitia and Daniel had apparently got into a argument. Daniel bends down to reach something from the floor and Letitia grabs a kitchen knife. She becomes very threatening and aggressive and in his attempts to disarm her, he accidentally stabs her one time. This testimony actually corroborates with the autopsy. There is only in fact one stab wound. However, there are no signs of struggle, no bruises and no marks suggesting a fight. And on top of that, the stab wound suggests that she would have died a slow and painful death, lasting somewhere in the regions of 30 minutes to three hours, but most likely not immediately. So the question arises, if this was in fact an accident, why did Danielle not call the ambulance and save her life? He chose not to, and he left her to die. Conclusion. The investigators believe that this was a crime of passion, but they also believe that money was heavily involved in the motive of this murder. Danielle had raised a huge amount of debt. He was a gambler and an online gamer, and he had expensive taste, but he had no job. Letitia was his only source of income, and he had managed to accumulate huge amounts of debts. He had opened loans in her name without her knowing, and over the course of eight months, he had managed to accumulate 24,000 euros worth of debt. He had also emptied his two daughters' saving accounts, burning through 6,000 euros of savings. Now, the fact is that the 24,000 euros worth of debt was in Letitia's name, even though he had forged her name on the papers. And the theory is that he believed if Letitia died, he would no longer have to repay his debts. One discovery was made over the course of the trial, and that was that Letitia used her car as a kind of safe to keep belongings from Danielle that she did not want him to see. So things like money, her paperwork, and one thing in particular she kept in her car was the lease of a new rental property that she had decided to start renting from the first of October. Now the investigators believe that Danielle broke into her car and found this paperwork. This paperwork was very poignant because it really showed that she had the intention to leave him and soon she was going to leave on the 1st of October. This means that he would lose not only his lover and his children but also his primary source of income. The court case was on the 20th of June 2017. During the trial Danielle did indeed state that he had committed the horrible murder of Letitia de la Cruz. He even apologized to his neighbor but forgot to apologize to the de la Cruz family. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison but only 11 years if he had good behavior. This is because the premeditation factor was not taken into account by the jury. They believed that he had not premeditated this murder and the reason for that was because there was only one stab wound and it was a stab wound that was not immediately fatal so they do believe that it was an accident so in 2017 he goes to jail and he will be out in 11 years so by my calculations that means that he will be out in 2000 and 2028. 2028 does not feel like that far away. So stay away from the verge. <laughs> There's so much weird things that go on in that little department. So um, yeah. Thank you one more time. We are humbled by your subscriptions. So if you would like to see some more videos, then normally there will be one. Here. If you want to hear a French story that we have not covered yet, then please comment below and we will get on that. And thank you for watching. Au revoir, à la prochaine.